Um, so let me see what we got on the board here. So, oh, okay. So, yeah. So last night, um, had our men talk that we that we have every third Thursday. So this was the October, um, installation or installment installation installment of men talk. So we were talking in. So it was actually our three year anniversary and we were discussing depression kind of, you know, in men, black men in general, our um, talks are generally for black men, but it's for all men, but it's just the majority of the people that have joined have always just been black men. So you cater to who comes, right? Um, so I have what I call a dismount at the end. And so it's always just a kind of quick wrap up of how I put my spin or my spill on how everything we kind of talked about. And so I decided to, um, I guess, do an introspective kind of re look on men talk, how it kind of started. And now that we're at the three year mark, just, you know, looking back. So it kind of started from me reflecting, you know, and doing my notes on and uh, how what I've done, I always kind of look back it, it, each year. My birthday is coming up and I, what I always do is kind of reflect over the year prior. Some of the things that happened and some of the things that I, you know, that helps me plan on kind of what I want to do and where I want to go. So doing the using those same tools and tactics, I was doing that for men talk. So looking back over the archives of things we talked about in this past year and just in general, I saw the reflection for the year prior and, and it just kind of took me to a different place, I guess this year with it being year three of men talk. So, um, so the story, how it started, you know, my, my dad died in uh, May the 13th of 09 and uh, then 13 months and 13 days exactly later, my mom died in June 26 of uh, 2020. So losing both of my parents and kind of going through that. And then at the same time, my wife and I have an, our first child together, our last and fifth child all together as a blended family. My son Rap was born, Robert Anthony Pullum, July the 14th. 2020 so if you're tracking uh he literally was born a week after we laid my mom to rest so during that period i was a zombie um uh, just everything was it was just going on I, I haven't even really reflected or healed from uh, burying my pops and then my mom goes and during that time we're pregnant and so I know throughout that whole period I didn't really fully even um I would say I would I would say be present through any of the probably pregnancy I was it was wild that's a whole nother story there uh so and and so thinking back at the funeral, we, we, my mom's funeral, it was during COVID time. And so with S being pregnant, I I can't really remember because COVID was so new and we didn't know anything about it. I don't, I can't remember if she was even at the ceremony, you know, for my mom and, it, and things were that foggy, especially then when I was looking back, it, it was just real foggy. And, um, I know um, that she was at the burial because that was outside. So we, at that time, we could do things outside. So, so just talking about how just being depressed and, and going through that um, had me out of there. And, I, and then I started cycling. Um, if everybody sees now, I, I, I vividly or avidly ride bikes, road cycling. All that goes with it, uh, my wife being scared of me doing it, but uh, the thrill of it, finally getting to something where I can feel athletic again because uh, I really can't run because my bad knees and, and that kind of thing. But So something I was able to kind of grasp onto, 
I started working out, uh, getting my body back in shape. And so with that and that commitment, that actually what is what I call my anchor. Th those things kind of anchor me throughout that time. So I was able to kind of find this place, kind of find an anchor and then try to kind of move forward and then start, you know, first being more present in my life you know, with my, my baby, my wife and, you know, in just our life as things kind of move forward. And then while cycling and riding, I heard men talk clear as day, kind of real wild. Yeah, I just heard men talk. So I didn't I didn't even know what that meant at all and kind of just really exploring it in my mind talk to my wife uh talk to you know great friend of mine doom uh damon logan and, and we just kind of talked and discussed what it may have meant and, and what i you know what my wife thought i needed uh what damon thought i needed what i thought i needed i started going to therapy and through all of these things came out needing and with me seeing that I know I have friends and loved ones that have gone through the same thing, but don't necessarily know how to tap in or there is no just direct line of where a support group. I just thought I need men talk was that area or that place. So throughout all of it, that kind of birthed that. And so, um, Oh, so so Tiffany DeBartolo says uh, throughout the whole process of this kind of depression and grief thing that we're all searching for something to fill up what I like to call the big hole in our souls. Uh, some people use alcohol or sex or their children, food or money or music or the weed, the weed, the weed. But it's really all the same thing, really. People think they can escape their sorrows. So in, in trying to escape through working out and cycling and, and I guess uh, men talk was birth because I actually needed it because therapy told me I needed it. That's real. And so throughout these th three years, um, I've just kind of gone through it. Uh, I've sought, you know, you, you, you seek to ask questions and have thoughts about where, where, what is this that I'm feeling? Um, why I can't shake myself out of it? And it, it, depression is real. Um, and so you're, you're, you're always in a spiraling type of feeling that you can't get out of this box um, you don't, you just don't feel like you, even though you may can turn on you at times, but you always, um, dwindle down into that just lonely, isolated feeling. So men talk was a great place for me. Um, uh, initially I loved it, you know, getting all your friends together on a call a zoom and, and you all kind of having this camaraderie and talking and, and maybe sometimes telling some stories and that kind of stuff. It was great. It then kind of changed uh, because now it's real work. So it's not just, you know, us on there talking or, or, or congregating or just, it's really us on there determined to be better in many ways to, assist each other as much as possible and then to hold each other accountable. So it, it's changed over the years. And so I'm thankful for that. Even when I didn't want to do it anymore, I've had many a days. I always consult with, with Damon after everyone, because he, he's on pretty much, he's been on, I would say 98% of them. Uh, so we always talk things that I could change. I could do better, you know, how I can present structure this kind of thing. And so he just offers just honest feedback. If he doesn't like it, he was like, Hey, I thought it was, you know, you could have did better or talk about this or, you know, it's always honest. So I always appreciate that from him. Uh, and so with, with that, I've talked to him about not wanting to do it anymore. Wanted to quit just being done. Cause I'm just tired. Um, like I explained last night, it's like opening a wound. 
every time opening up yourself to try to make sure that you're meeting somebody in a place that they feel like they are alone and that and 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 it's hard it it's a strange place to be in and to have to do that over and over and over when you don't want to do it at all but then to have to kind of do it to help somebody else it always doesn't um 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 it doesn't there's no mm, I, I would say it's selfish because you want some type of gratification and 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 maybe I'm not explaining it or articulating it correctly in my mind is that why would I do that that is that's just the question why would I do that but every time I've tried to stop um somebody's calling like hey such and such gave me your number and said um I could talk to you about or you would pray for me about or just you've been through this and so it's um it's strange it's strange when I get to that point I always come back and it always centers me back to well you your your original purpose or your story is you didn't have it and so you created it so then why would you leave something that you felt like was a need so it's never been about money for me payola i i don't get paid for this really it's just my time and my brain coming up with stuff and you know uh, um god kind of directing where this is going so join if you will it, it's not a crybaby session believe me these dudes on here are you know straighten up your back type of men nobody's coming to save you type of brother so um you're not gonna get a bunch of uh sob stories or people really trying to console you in those times it's just more of a solution based we need to be doing this instead of worrying about what happened it's now where are you going next right it's always progression with guys well with me and most guys i know so hey appreciate you listening to me thank you see you next time